Hey, I'm Liz Kern, uh, Jennifer Ross in the movie Intruder, and you are watching Slasher Pepper. Check it out. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper here, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be interviewing Liz Kern from Intruder, my uh, favorite movie of all time. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, no, you just, <laughs> that was such a suck up thing to say. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm good. How's that? that it is my favorite really movie. Cool. I'm not just saying that because you are here not right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hysterical. Well, you know, it's been like what, 1987, 88 is when we shot it, and it's been like 30 years. So I seriously had to look up some of the characters and and just names because it's been so long. And right. I unearthed. Um, okay, check this out. You're gonna like this. I unearthed my script. So this oh, is my nice. original script that has everything in it and all my notes and even autographs from people. Can you see like Oh, that is that so show? cool. Yeah. So I was looking through it and I haven't looked at this thing for probably 20 years because I don't sit and stare at my, you know, intruder <laughs> script all the time. <laughs> it's like life goes on, you know. But there's some there's some really cool things about it that um, you know, we have the rap party information. How cool is that? Is it backwards for you? No, it's not. It's not? Okay, that's cool. Cool. And even my screams. Oh, right. Yeah. I saw that in uh, like the, um, the second disc, the bonus disc from the um, Synapse Films release. You mentioned the, that you had like five different screams you used throughout yeah. the film. <laughs> and I, I actually had to look it up because it's been so long that, you know, um, right. Because I screamed so much during the movie, <laughs> I had to figure out, seriously, I had to figure out not sounding the same the whole time. So um, I actually had an acting coach and we went through and we locked out each, um, each part of the movie, what scream would match for, you know, what scene. So uh, it was kind of technical, actually, which right. is, you know, just bizarre. But um, so what do you want to ask me? <laughs> so um, my first question was, what are you up to nowadays? Um, nowadays, I work for a news station. I went, after acting, I got my broadcast journalism degree at USC, and I went to um, school, and I was a TV anchor in El Paso, Texas, for a station called KDBC. Then I moved out here to Fresno, and I got hired by um, KMJ, which is a, a talk radio station, and I do the news updates for the bottom of the top of the hour. So you can actually go online at kmjnow.com. Um, I also have you know, I'm, I'm on the page there. I do reports. So you can stream me and listen to my little three minute reports of news, um, which I do basically Monday through Friday. And uh, so I'm a radio person. I have my microphone here. And because of the, the coronavirus pandemic, I'm actually broadcasting from my house. Um, right. So it's, it's a whole new thing. Yeah. And as we were talking about getting the Zoom set up, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't really Zoom. I basically record my updates and then send them in. So I've had right. to kind of, you know, learn how to do all this stuff. So that it's makes a new sense. World. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Brave new world. <laughs> so you are, it's a brave new world and it's fun. You're in Holland. Yes, correct. Right. My, my family, I married a Swiss man. So my in-laws live in, um, in Zurich and Mallorca. Oh, right. Um, yeah. That's not too so far I'm from here. No, it's not. So, and we would be there if it weren't for the pandemic. Oh, really? Oh, that sucks. <laughs> We'd be in Mallorca. Yeah, we would have taken a vacation, but that didn't happen. So, right. But, um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, I'm I'm a mom now. I have two kids. Um, I have a son, Aussie Kern, who's a swimmer, and he's uh, 17. I have a, another son, Bodie Kern, who's 11, and he's also you know a little jock. So Aussie's got his own Instagram page and girls checking him out. He's got probably more viewers than I do or more people, <laughs> you know, all these girls who think he's adorable. And <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I have an Instagram page and um, I'm on Twitter at Lizzie Kern News. So I'm trying to keep up with social media. You, you have to, you evolve. Yeah. So, even though I'm old. Right. Basically. <laughs> you have to keep track on everything, <laughs> especially when you're like a radio host. Yeah. Like you need to be, so. stay relevant, right? Well, because I do the news, it's kind of different. We have talk radio people, so I do the news section. So I'm staying, I'm staying relevant on the events, but I don't have to 
chat up people or talk long term, which is nice. Right. You know, I hate talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I'm not in the business. I'm not in show business anymore. So I kind of, you know, the I think the last movie I did was Stages of Fear in El Paso when I was a TV anchor. Someone said, "Hey, would you like to do, you know, a bit in a movie?" So I got to play Chris Penn's wife. Um, Sean Penn's brother Chris Penn was in Footloose as the kind of dorky guy who didn't know how to dance right. so I played his wife yeah so many years ago so um, that yeah, was that actually cool. that so. actually brings me to my next question um, why didn't you do many movies after Intruder and you know why didn't you think maybe um, I want to be a big I, actress because <laughs> well with Intruder, unfortunately, Empire Productions went out of business before they got screen release. So that kind of, you know, screwed the pooch on that, basically. So um, I, we weren't able to release in theaters, which would have really had a, a big boost. But I think at that point, I still was doing, um, I still was do, doing some acting. But um, I just kind of got to the point where it's like, acting's a hard biz. And I'm too thin-skinned for that. So... I was like, I'm, I'm out of here. So I actually <laughs> went to school for, you know, journalism, which I thought, you know, I still like being in front of the camera, but I hate interviewing. I hate auditioning, you know, so much because you have to audition as an actor so many times you're doing, you know, three auditions a day, five days a week. And, um, it's, it's a tough business. And I, I said, maybe I could just do one audition and then get something and have be employed for a long time. And I thought, well, you know, being, in TV as a host or as a reporter, that would be a good job because then I just do that one audition and then I can actually work for a while instead of always looking for the next job. Right. So, but Intruder was, it was a pretty incredible film. And I think at the time, you know, it was um, kind of more current, I think, than some of the films. If you listen to the dialogue, some of it's a little, you know, antiquated, but not all of it. I mean, it, it sounds, we were pretty low key in our acting. Um, you know, it wasn't all like, Oh my gosh, you know, right. I'm going to do something totally stupid. <laughs> a lot of, you know, like a lot of the horror film actresses got stuck in, in stupid positions or, or bad situations where you're saying, why are you in there? Get out. The killer's right. behind the door, <laughs> you know? And so I think with this movie, I really fought, to try to give her a little bit more brain than, you know, just your run of the mill average um, scream actress, you know? And I was, I was um, fighting for like vulnerability with her and there's a scene actually, okay, so actresses in the eighties and eighties um, and nineties, they were always losing their clothes basically, right? A lot of actresses. Yeah. And actually the scene, I have one scene in a bathroom where I take off my shirt, I still have a bra on, but that was my idea because I wanted that scene to show her vulnerable because the guy is looking in the window, you know, the stalker is looking in the window and I wanted her to feel like, you know, scared and, and sort of like open and exposed. So I told him, you know what, I'm going to take my shirt off. I'm going to be in my bra and, and look around and be, you know, just like trying to um, hold my modesty. And, and um, I wanted that so that it would give a little bit more color to the character. I also liked that she fought back too. Um, I think one of my favorite scenes is when I got to like stab, you know, the killer and say, suck on this. See, I mean, it's a great line, suck on this. And I, I stab it with one of those like retractable knives or whatever. Right. <laughs> he, 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 he actually grabs me underneath the car first under the Jeep and slides me under. And so, you know, it was, it was really fun shooting that because it was very action, action based. And I, I did my own stunt, I guess. And a lot of, it was a physical movie too. There's a lot of running, a lot of um, scenes, you know, where I'm being chased or, you know, I'm having to find all these bodies and you, they had me running all over. So it was a very aerobic movie <laughs> to shoot. So, oh yeah, for sure. Like in the yeah. end, there's even um, some running over like cashier uh, checkouts, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and jumping and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no double. <laughs> right. Well, you can you can no tell that, that that's not Danny Hicks, <laughs> which yeah. rest in peace. Yeah. Jim, by the way. Right. That totally sucked. Yeah. I was actually I, talking yeah. to him um, on Facebook. I, I would have done a similar interview with him, and he was he was really nice and like um, reached oh. back in two weeks. You know, then um, fortunately. Oh no. Away. Yeah, that sucks. 
he was um, he was a nice guy yeah do you have any memories cool. like fond memories with him together on set um he was he was a good actor very smart with his lines and he had a great scene where he's eating the apple and talking about you know carrying a head so um i don't know if you you splice in takes but um that was that's a pretty remarkable scene i mean yeah. scott scott spiegel was a great director and and so ahead of his times with the points of view the shots that he put in a point of view of a telephone as i'm dialing or you know point of view of a bucket that i'm crying into so he was really you know just some of those crazy um setups that he did for the shots were pretty far forward i think that's why the movie is still relevant because oh, yeah. he had such fun with it and he just had such a creative um thought process of how he was going to shoot it so um and it was you know there were some technical aspects okay have one tear drop into the bucket <laughs> sure okay <laughs> no problem <laughs> you know, i'll just <laughs> squeeze that out so i mean there was stuff he he ran me through the ringer i mean he worked me hard because i was just all over the set and finding these bodies and um we had the guys um kurtzman the special effects guys were just incredible. They went on to do Dances with Wolves. I mean, they, they did our little movie. And then here you see them. And now, you know, um, Greg Nicotero is doing uh, the, uh, the Walkers and um, Walking Dead. I'm like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's Greg Nicotero. <laughs> he was on our movie. Holy crap. <laughs> so <laughs> right. that's just people have gone on. Um, of course, Lawrence Bender, who, you know, was producer of that, who was also my boyfriend at the time. We'd been dating. Oh, for, really? You know, going out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were going out for three years. And uh, Intruder was one of the later things. He was, I think I met him two weeks after I moved to LA in 1986 from Chicago. So I was a Chicago girl. Right. And, <laughs> uh, and, you know, and Lawrence made me audition for it. I just, he actually didn't want to put me into it, into the part, because, you know, he was my boyfriend at the time. And He's like, you know, there are other producers, there are other people, there are other um, the director, and you have to convince them. So I worked my tail off, you know, taking the, the sides and really trying to um, flesh them out. So um, it was, you know, it was a lot of work. And, and Lawrence helped me too. He's a great actor. He's a um, great producer. He started out as a as an actor, and that's how we were, you know, meeting at an actor's party at my apartment on 14th Place in North Hollywood. So awesome. You know, it's, it was interesting. Yeah. A little back history there. Right. So, um, uh, and then Ted Ramey and Scott Ramey, oh, uh, right. Sam Ramey. Yeah. You know, of course, Sam Ramey. And I love Scott Spiegel in the shot of Spider Man when uh, Sam put him in the movie <laughs> with the pizza and Spider Man grabs it, you know. So when people would say, Who's Scott Spiegel? I'd say, Do you remember, you know, that scene? Right. Pizza, that's Scott, <laughs> you know. So, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a very, very talented. Um, crew and actor group to work with you know they've gone on to do various projects so Sam are you still in famous. are you still in touch with some of the um I, cast and crew no <laughs> no really? I, no I'm not um no I kind of I mean I moved when I moved out of Los Angeles and I moved to El Paso Texas to start working as a tv anchor there you know I, I kind of like didn't really have ties with anybody so it just sort of faded away, but I, I've seen them and I've, you know, started friending people on Instagram. So, right. But, um, but no, I haven't. And I thought it'd be kind of cool, you know, to do something like one of those, um, horror comms or, you know, they have the conventions. Oh, right. <laughs> Not right now, but. <laughs> just like but a whole will, panel. Hopefully. Yeah. Intruder like, cast and crew all yeah. together again. So, yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it's a cool movie and a lot of people are, um, are rediscovering it now because it, oh, it yeah. had a limited it had a limited um release because of empire productions going bankrupt so we you know we were kind of robbed of that whole big screen um possibility with paramount and uh um so you know who knows but it, it's really cool that now you know fan lover uh, horror film fans are are revisiting it and um you know just seeing what scott did and and um just the film how, how kind of cool really for sure yeah, so. for sure and i mean you contacted me so. <laughs> yeah exactly and it's it's my favorite film because um i well work now uh in a supermarket myself 
And I always had this idea of like a slasher film in a supermarket. And I didn't realize there was one already. And then I watched Intruder and, and there are literally like scenes in there that I had in my head myself for a movie I would want to make later. It was like, yeah. this is like my movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and it's, it's and also besides the Blob remake, the only movie where I was like grossed out just because of what was happening on the screen, you know? Um, the, other, the special other than, effects. Yeah, they're so good crazy crazy i mean we we actually had in the bandsaw bandsaw scene where um they slice uh billy marty's head in half basically our um i think it was our continuity director she had to leave the shooting <laughs> oh, right. because it was so real that she was she was getting sick to her stomach she actually had to walk off set she couldn't handle it because it was you know and Billy was there squirming on the table um, for, you know, the cutaway shots. And it was really um, very visceral, very, you know, emotional effect to see that because um, Greg, Nic uh, Greg Nicotera, uh, was it Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotera, the two of them were so good at their special effects and so realistic. And if you look at the bodies and, you know, uh, it was remarkable. I mean, the guy should have won an Oscar for what they did. Oh, with yeah. This movie. Just of the sexual effects and you see the you know billy marty's head they created a head to saw in half it's one take you know they didn't have other heads backed right. up they had that one so you better get it right and <laughs> you know when they did it was just um it was so gruesome and that's you know kind of i think people like that too just the the quality of the special effects yeah you know, well, like the teeth like, the teeth do it for me that's like i don't know what it is about them but that makes it just more gross and actually yeah. um <laughs> I'm in film school now and we all had to show one scene from a movie. Uh, so everyone's kind of like showing, you know, Marvel superhero movies, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted to show that scene. So I showed that and I was like, yes, you know, it's my favorite movie. I've, I'd seen that scene so many times that the shock value kind of lowered, you know, but the whole class was like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> what is this guy showing? You know, <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, the special effects were, were just uh, sublime, supreme. Yeah. They, were, they were the best. And um, just some really neat pictures. I'm going to have to upload. Um, I'm going to have to search for photos and see if I can find some more. Because we took photos on set. Um, so I'll at Lizzie Kern News, and I'll see if I can tag you or, or whatever we do. Awesome. To get some more photos. Um, but I was like the little photographer. Um, That's really cool. But yeah, they, we, and we shot it for a month. Um, in a supermarket and, and a kind of like a, a out of business supermarket in Bell Gardens, California. Um, it was hot. It was smelly because there was still, you know, there's still a few products in that supermarket. Oh, right. So, you know, and um, I think we're shooting in summer. It's, gosh, it's been so long, but um, it was just, it, the smell was kind of like, okay, we're here in, you know, a place with rotting food. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, you know, it kind of got you into the, the mood of the movie. So, and uh, yeah, I can imagine some, <laughs> some great uh, co-stars, Renee Estevez, Charlie Sheen's um, sister was in that. And it was funny because I'd actually met her brother, Charlie Sheen, when I did a movie called The Wraith. Um, I don't know if you've seen that one, The Turbo Wraith with Charlie Sheen, Nick Cassavetes, but okay, something to watch. Yeah. And I play, um, <laughs> I play, uh, oh, I don't remember, Girl in Daytona, I think, was that um, scene. So I was in a script reading with Charlie Sheen, and then later on with his sister, which was kind of cool, you know. Yeah, the kind family. of full circle uh, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, and she sent me photographs that she took um, in a little envelope, mailed it to me, and it was so cool because I had Charlie Sheen's, um, was it Martin Sheen's address on the back of it? I'm like, I could go full stalker on Martin Sheen right. and go to his house in Malibu because now I have the address. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, I'm like stalking Renee Estevez. So you just become um, your boyfriend's okay, character. Girl. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what, so, uh, what else do you think? What else are you intrigued about that you? What do you think Intruder 2 would have been about? if they ever made that one. Oh my gosh. Um, I would have owned the supermarket. 
<laughs> and we're slashing prices all over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cheapest of them all. <laughs> all products you may, help you may, you may get in, but you may not leave <laughs> after your <laughs> right. <shopping> trip. <laughs> so, I don't know. It, it's interesting. I mean, there, there are a lot of films that they're um, starting to look and doing the next generation. So, it would be interesting to have an in, you know, intruder too. So I had this, I had this thing going on and I still need to continue it. Um, where I used to live stream and with my subscribers, I would write intruder two and we would kind of go scene by scene and how that would go. And it was, it was, you're familiar with the new Halloween films, right? Yeah. It Jamie was kind of like a sequel 40 years after. That's what I was thinking. So yeah. For me, it was like a 30 years after intruder. And, um, there was not enough evidence to get you and, uh, your boyfriend's character out of prison so you guys have been in prison for 30 years Off. <laughs> and um so you guys break <laughs> out of it with like a new character and there's this sort of oh. thing going on where where the the character from prison is also kind of kind of a killer himself you know it's kind of just adds oh my. adds the suspense and uh danny hicks character billy he's now uh still manager of another supermarket and he's just, <laughs> he's just living life. So no one knows that he's actually the killer except for you guys, but no one believes you, you know? Um, oh my gosh. And that's, that's where I was so far. So <laughs> I still need that's to write cool. that kind of out because it's kind of well, cool to fantasize about what could have been, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you never know, Roger. So right. You right. Well, me. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to replace Danny Hicks, you know, that would just be yeah. kind of disrespectful yeah. to the original film. Right. So, but it's still fun yeah, to Danny, fantasize about it. Yeah. Well, it, it was interesting. The last scene, um, Lawrence, Lawrence was playing the police officer. I don't know <laughs> right. if you realize that. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I have my boyfriend handcuffing me. Thank you so much, jerk. Um, <laughs> but, and then Bruce Campbell. I mean, it was the coolest thing to have him there, you know. Um, so, it, interesting scene and the last shot of course then taking me screaming oh yeah okay. that's wonderful so but um yeah it could be it could be interesting to see like a sequel you know i think i think that you know yourself you're talented go through film school come out and you know start something right Who i knows? think people people want to see um what what people have done with their lives. I do too. You know, where right. is this person? Where is this actress? The girl right. from yeah. you know, what Nightmare on Elm Street, what's she doing? So, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. It, which is kind um, of what I'm doing with this channel now, you know, interviewing people that wouldn't be interviewed by press, but a lot of horror uh -huh. fans would want to know about, you know? Right. So, um, I saw Linnea Quigley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really neat stuff. And um, people, you know, especially now that it's hard to do production too because of, um, you know, the coronavirus. So people are kind of, you're stuck in your house and a lot of people are looking through their old photos. You right. know, they're, they're, they have time basically to check out like some of the old videos and a lot of movie watching, you know, Netflix like crazy here. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. what do you have there? Do you have, do yeah, Netflix we have Netflix there? too. Um, okay. And, and we have like, we don't have Shutter, which is like the horror uh, Netflix, uh -huh. you know. Uh, that's not available over here. Uh, but yeah, mostly Netflix over here, indeed. Um, but I'm I'm a collector, so I'm a physical media kind of guy. So I have everything on Blu-ray, you know. <laughs> Do you know? I actually haven't seen my own Blu-ray because I don't own a Blu-ray machine. Oh, so really? I've never <laughs> seen. Yeah, the one that they shot in 2011. Uh, yeah. Synapse went back and they interviewed me and I talked about mm -hmm. my screams. Yeah, I've and, seen that. You know, <laughs> I haven't. Isn't oh, that crazy? Shit. Yeah. I, I've never seen it. So I have no idea how that came out. But it was fun filming it. I got to go, um, you know, I was living in, in Fresno at the time, still living here. And I got to drive down to LA and, you know, see some old friends. Um, my sister still lives there. Um, oh, so you were Kathy. actually like with the group while filming that? I was not with, I was not with the group of people. I, they had okay. us one by one. So I didn't actually right, get okay. to see anybody. Yeah, unfortunately. That's, that's it would have been cool. Right. Yeah. So, but they had us, um, you know, go in one by one and do our interview. And so I brought my old roommate from back in the days, you know, when I was a young actress 
and um, to watch. And her daughter was there too to watch. So it was neat to, you know, to, and my sister came along during the shoot. So that part was fun, but I've never seen it. So I have no <laughs> idea how it came out. But I remember well, you, you they asked check me. check it out. It's really good. I know. I, I need to get Blu-ray. I just, I've never bought a Blu-ray machine. So, and um, I don't really have Blu-ray. You don't have a, like a PS4 or an Xbox where you can play it on? I do. You know, you I might also, be able to do that. Yeah. You can also play it on that. Okay. My kids, my 17-year-old's more techie than I am. Right. <laughs> I live, you know, my 11-year-old wants to be a gamer. So right. <laughs> <laughs> he probably knows more about this, like his I'm favorite sure. Sunday and I'm sure it can help yeah. you out. <laughs> yeah, so I know I have to do that. I actually um, was going through stuff and I think I found the Blu-ray disc copy. So, but I, you know, I'm from Chicago, moved to LA, moved to El Paso, Texas, and then moved to Fresno. So in the time that I was from LA to El Paso, you know, I had to save all these things, you know, the tapes and I uncovered VHS tapes um, of Intruder. Oh, wow. I even had like, you know, I have old stuff. But Those are quite through, rare like, too. Yeah, yeah two cities. Days. Yeah. But so I, I need to hold on to that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's really cool. And yeah. um, are are you a horror fan yourself? Um, I like horror films. I maybe I should be more of one. I'm pretty, you know, I don't like being scared. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say are some of your favorites? Um Halloween. Um, actually it's the exorcist is kind of not really horror, so to say, but, um, you know, it is, it's kind of supernatural horror. Yeah. Um, sure. that, that really scares me. Um, oh gosh, what else? Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, it's kind of, I don't know. Let's see. I saw what you did last summer. Oh, some right. of the, Yeah. Some of the scenes, some of the, the newer ones I haven't really kept up with, but, you know, some of the classic ones, um, the 80s. But then sometimes I'm like, okay, enough. <laughs> right. You know? right. You are Christian And too, right? I, I am Christian, yeah. So I try not to, you know, try yeah, not to so watch too many deranged stuff. But. <laughs> so one of the suggested questions from, one of, uh, from a good friend of mine was, uh, Uh, it was Christian herself. As a Christian, what are your thoughts on being one and also being part of the horror community? Um, you know, I had a friend who was saying that if you delve too far into things, you expose yourself to elements. And, you know, I kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's also make-believe too. Right. So mm -hmm. I guess I'm fiction. kind of, a, uh, it's fiction. Yeah. So I sort of, push it a, a compartmentalize a little bit or I'm a crappy Christian, <laughs> but it is, it, it's more compartmentalizing. And, you know, I, I understand horror film lovers. It's kind of like, I think the technique, the, um, the, the, the shots, the filming, that's what they like. You know, um, yeah. if you're really into the gore and you're like enjoying it too much, then maybe, you know, that's a little off. But I think, <laughs> I think it's just the filming and filming a horror film wasn't scary. It was actually a lot of, it's a lot of work, you know, and it's hard work to, to bring yourself to those states where you're screaming and yeah. You know. So plus it was a paying gig. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's more But, like of the, of the holy shit that looks so realistic. Yeah. How did they do that instead of like, yeah. Holy shit, I want to do that myself because then you, right. should, you should see a psych. Yeah, then then you have some problems. So <laughs> hopefully, you know. So and in some ways I'm I'm actually I'm kind of glad that I don't have that many people that know who I am because I think, you know, working in television, you know, we had some stalkers there at the TV station. And I was like, okay, this is just I don't need to have any more of this. Right. You know, and I have, I have kids too. So mm -hmm, exactly. I'm like, okay, that's good. I mean, being really super successful is not always the best thing. No, you know? so no, I, I kind of, not. yeah. And I kind of enjoy um, some of my privacy. So mm -hmm. yeah, the social I, media. I think it's just fun. Like saying you're in, in like a cult classic that now a lot of people recognize yeah. instead of like, I was in this super big Hollywood movie that everyone knows and everyone one is chasing me and taking pictures of me walking to right. get the newspaper yeah. out of, of the mailbox. You know? Yeah. And I, I'm glad that I don't have that because that's, 
that's a rough life. Now yeah. I have um, one of my friends who is in my little clique, um, Mark Dacascos. He's um, an actor who was part of our, our little group. Um, we used to work out together. We lived in the same apartment building. He's, he played Zero in uh, John Wick 3. Um, he's a martial arts guy. And he's um, famous in, in sort of a way, he's not crazy intense famous, but he is well known. And he's got the martial arts community that really knows him. And something All like right. that, that's a nice type of famous. Mm -hmm. But it's not like insane, you know, like John Travolta, you right. can't go anywhere famous or, you know, that's, I think that's a hard life to live. So For sure. you kind of become insulated. So um, I don't, I don't regret not becoming a superstar because there's, there's a lot of that. And even with my kids, um, seeing them, would I want them to go into show business? I don't know, only if I was able to be there with them and watch them because, you know, it, it's a tough industry. There are a lot of people who want to take advantage of you. Um, yeah. I was fortunate. You know, Harvey Weinstein met right, him. Exactly. I He was, um, Lawrence worked on him with films and I actually met him at um, one of the restaurants there in LA, you know, um, a few years later. And so I was lucky that nothing, you know, I didn't have any of the abuses that some of the actresses did because that was the eighties, the nineties. And, um, you had to watch out. I mean, this is kind of getting heady, you know, it's a little, little heavy and intense conversation, mm -hmm. but, um, it, was it is something, something that, is, that is, should be discussed. It's something as an actress in, in those days, you know, you might have an audition in a hotel room with a director and he's like, okay, lift up your shirt or whatever, you know, and it, just the uncomfortableness and, and people going past their boundaries of what they should have done. So I think nowadays, you know, being an actress in this era versus in the eighties is maybe a little bit easier and it's a little bit more aware of, there's an awareness of, of what it was like um, for females, you know, predominantly females, I would say, in yeah. the 80s and, <clears throat> and 90s, having to deal with that, and the Me Too, so, Right, because know, of that old movement, it's, yeah, but it's like, and, it's not gone, you know? Yeah, it's not entirely gone, but I was, I was fortunate with what I was working on, that um, I had people who, that respected me, and um, that, you know, Intruder was a great experience. It was, I, I didn't feel anyway compromised i mean i i had a voice um scott's a great director and he would take you know input from me um and we worked on things i tried to be less of a victim in the scenes you know um than some of the other actresses in that time in that era and um those those were important for me you know in my notes i actually have written sigourney weaver for one scene and oh, sigourney right. weaver you know that was my direction for myself like be like Sigourney Weaver, the, the kick-ass oh, aliens. Yeah, that's a cool like, you know, basis you know, to go from. To to kind of figure out, okay, these scenes you had to, you know, I look through my script and I have all these different notes about, you know, what what was I thinking at the time or what was I trying to do, and you know, we we took out each scene and gave um, notes like, you know, need strong reassurance. I mean, check this stuff out. There's like little needs strong reassurance. So with the the acting coach that I had, we went through each scene. These are all my scenes written out of um, just my sections of the movies. And we went through and we kind of um, decided, determined how to play each scene to, you know, give it a life and give it um, solidity and, and, you know, strength and a, a basis and not just have her be a horror bimbo basically. Right. So, and, and I think that's something that we did. I'm, I, I think that it wasn't a bimbo character. A lot of them were, you know, I'm yeah. like, oh, save right. me, you know, <laughs> gag me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, but this was, it, it's cool. Like a Friday the 13th so, part three, there's one scene where a, a girl's like just screaming, oh my God. And, and it's like, the same oh my god like five times the exact same mm -hmm. way you know and she's mm -hmm. just running and yeah. you're like no one would act that way you know <laughs> right and then you know because i was um gosh i think i was 18 when i was shooting this 18 or 19 i was still young enough and um i was you know i was hanging with my friends i hang with mark my martial arts buddy and 
we were kick ass and we were like, you know, I, I don't want to be some wussy chick, you know, I want to be strong. So, and that's kind of doing the screams too. You know, I have my tarantula scream. I have like the in, you know, <gasps> all these different right. screams to kind of make it different. So it was funny. I hate spiders. So that was one of my screams. You know, I scream bloody murder anytime I see a spider <laughs> in my house. <laughs> so I'm like, ah! you know, my husband, he knows, oh, spider. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, dear. Can you kill it for me? Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we really tried to, you know, delineate the different um the, the screams and and just you know not just be one one tone one level character right i think it's really smart to have like five different ones you know to work yeah. with uh, that's really yeah. uh, useful yeah so we broke it up so i've been talking your ear off haven't i <laughs> <laughs> well i mean more material for the interview right that's awesome yeah is there <laughs> anything else you um you were wondering did you have other people ask you questions no, actually, my last question was if there was anything you would like to add to the interview. Um, I, I'd love for people to reach out um, on my page, you know, and I, I try to, when I see Intruder, now that Instagram is a thing, you know, I sometimes, um, like if I see someone write about Intruder, I'll actually comment on their page. It's like, yeah, that was me, you know, which is cool <laughs> because... Um, I got married, and so my name isn't Elizabeth Cox anymore. That was my maiden right. name. Right. So, you know, and I, I don't go by um, Elizabeth. I go by Liz. So I have a little bit more anonymity, but it's kind of fun sometimes for people, you know, if I see something on Instagram, I'll, like, you know, write something. Hi. You know, and they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, that's the intruder chick. <laughs> that's, that's Jennifer. <laughs> Why is she contacting me on the page, you know? It's fun. It's fun to do that. Yeah, that was that was the reason I I only now I'm interviewing you because I was like my friend reached out to me and I was like here's the final girl from Intruder. How did I not find her page? And then I saw your name and I was like that's not Elizabeth Cox, right? And then on your face <laughs> it's, it's just your photos. <laughs> yeah. So um it's cool. I I finally wrote in my Instagram bio, you know, yeah, that was me in Intruder. Because, <laughs> you know, just to make it a little easier people to that's, get that that's so, fun yeah. you know it's cool and I'm, I'm cool when people reach out I I love this I love what you're doing I think it's really neat I'm glad you're you're um you know going ahead and, and looking at film and yeah, I thank hope you. that you have success with this you know Scott Sp Scott Spiegel and um those guys they were young when they were doing this you know yeah they were in Sam their, Raimi their and, and Scott Spiegel those 20s. were like my biggest inspirations yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And they're, they were young and they had vision, they had ideas and Scott's point of view, just these quirky, you know, shots that he do with the camera. And of course, you know, the Raimi's with Evil Dead one and two, Bruce Campbell in their little posse, their little band. Um, they had great ideas. And with what we have nowadays with social media and the internet, you can, you can upload your own mini movie and you don't have to rely on studios which, you know, kind of sucks for the studios, but it's great <laughs> for the average person because you can create content and actually have people see it. Whereas you don't have to wait for a big budget studio, you know, film to come to you. You can create your own films and, and, um, and movie making and have people actually see it if you can get it to go viral. So there's right. a real opportunity now that with social media that, that we didn't have before in the eighties, you know, for good or bad. I mean, it can yeah, go both yeah. ways, you know, sure. but it's a, it's a new world. So if you're up and coming, you know, you see the kid who was just um, doing the Superman, uh, the, the videos, actually I have to get that off my screen. Um, the, the kid who was impersonating all the different super Marvel characters and Robert Igor contacted him. Okay. You have to look it up. He, I have not he, seen like, that yet. Okay. You have to check that out. But, um, you know, you're able to reach a much greater audience. I mean, obviously yeah. you're in, you're in Holland and right. I'm here in Fresno, California. And it's like <laughs> just before lunchtime. So yeah, it's, just, it's, I had dinner like two hours ago. <laughs> right. It, that's the craziness. So it, that's just really, it's the ability to reach out to people all over the world and have them see what you're creating, which is really cool. So. Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned um, like the, like, creative camera shots 
I do have one more question. There's this uh, scene at the beginning, or it's like I think it's the compilation where you kind of get like shots from the supermarket, uh, Walnut mm-hmm. Lake Market, and there's one scene where you are. Um, Ah, shit, how do you say this? Um, like cleaning the floor, you know, with, um, mm-hmm. what's it called? Like a broom. You're a cleaning broom? the floor with uh-huh. a broom. And you yeah. can, was was there like a dirty stuff on a glass plate and the camera underneath there? Because it's like a shot from underneath. I yes. Know, yeah. That was they probably had me, glass plate, right? They had me on um, plexiglass and they had the camera shooting up. So I actually had to like do it on top. And so you right. see, and we had to do it really slow. Some of the shots, like um, like that one with the sweeping, and you just see it kind of sweeping across. Yeah. The knife shot, um, where you see, um, oh gosh, the one scene where someone's reflected in the knife. Oh yeah. If you remember that, mm-hmm. I had to hold that darn knife so still, and and like Scott's like, okay, just <laughs> turn it a little, you know, and the knife's just kind of like. Eh. So that was hard, you know, because. Right. But we're standing at a distance. We we had to, you know, like just he's talking to me, like, okay, all right, turn a little more. So some of the the technical aspects of the film were pretty tricky. I mean, he shot through um, the holes when I was hiding at the end of the check stand, and this lights coming in. He shot through there, and you know, um, I don't know what you call that thing, the the board. So he had some very interesting shots, the phone the telephone yeah. you know point point of view of a rotary phone people probably don't <laughs> even know what that is anymore right. so that's too funny oh my gosh my cat <laughs> whoops my cat jumped up here oh shit. okay <laughs> <laughs> we could see him for a little so, bit <laughs> i know and then he like totally knocked over my thing so um yeah, it, just the, the shots were so cool. Some of the shots that he or like did. the jar, with Danny X's face like looking through the jar, you know, and then yeah. like moving really oh wide. Oh my gosh! With the music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the gross one of the gross out shots was when um, Eugene got. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Hold on. Hmm. He got like killed, stabbed through the eyeball. Okay, that. That grossed me out. There wasn't too much yeah. that grossed me out in the film because I knew all the background, but that shot, I was like, oh, man. Because you could just imagine, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something going through your eyeball. I was like, oh, that was nasty. Yeah, yeah like, that's, that's like one of my least favorite shots. <laughs> like anything with eyeballs and needles is just yeah, I'm like, wrong. <laughs> no, it's bad. It's really bad. So, but... um. Is there Very anything cool. else you would like to add? Um, I think I think you really, you know, I can't think of anything else. I know you. I've talked your head off, but this has been really fun. <laughs> yeah, I've for really sure. enjoyed it. So yeah, reach out, you know, at Lizzie Kern News, and you can, you know, become my Instagram friend. And I'll link it in I'm, the description. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So anytime you want to talk roger i've had a, a such a good time doing this for sure me it's too. so cool yeah and i'm i'm glad that i got to you know know your your site because now i'm going to be watching it <laughs> that's awesome that's really awesome did you know no pressure. Any, did you know um <laughs> intruder was anyone's favorite movie um you know i started seeing um oh my gosh it was 20 years ago i got a review in variety and it was kind of cool it, it was a nice review I think I knew even at the time that we shot it that this was a movie because because it didn't go into um, the, the theaters because it went bankrupt. You know, Empire Productions went bankrupt. I thought, okay, in 20, 30 years, people are going to start to see this and see how cool it is. So I kind of had a little foreshadowing because of, because of what Scott did and those shots and the uniqueness and how kind of we didn't play it like a lot of horror movies where you know, it's all fluffy, fake, and just people are doing things that are, you know, doesn't make sense. No, exactly. Um, it was kind of like, you know, even there was there was a show called Charmed um, with uh, Rose McGowan and, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Uh, some of the other actresses. And the way that they did it, it was very, their acting was very low key, very kind of, you almost threw away your lines. And it was a it was a style that was coming in versus some of the really you know exaggerated acting. So I think 
we were a little bit calmer in our acting in some ways, you know, more like we kind of threw away some of the lines, yeah. we talked like normal people. Um, so I think that made it a little bit more relevant that you could look at it 30 years later and it still kind of makes sense. You could still see the people working in a market and some of the, you know, they're, they're people working in a grocery store, grocery store and they're bored and they're just, you know, they're goofing off just like what you do in the store. Right. right? Exactly. You know, and I think pr probably for you, you could see, you know, what you, right. What it's like working for you in a grocery yeah, store. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this one scene where Ted Raimi is like lifting a box of watermelons and he's like having this really goofy face because it's like a heavy box, you know? And I swear, sometimes when I walk like back uh, at the store, I would see someone lifting like a box of bananas, making the same face, you know, which is like yeah. intruder. <laughs> it's, it's totally, it's relatable. So yeah. I think that's something that, you know, that's what transcends the time of, you know, decades is that it is relatable. And it's, um, it's also funny to see some of the boxes too. Like the product. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, because those know, designs the, the have not boxes. changed. <laughs> or like the, <laughs> yeah. the, the banana box, so, which, um, which is like, uh, the one employees use to like, mm -hmm. you know, re refill Card stuff. or, you know, that, that box is the same in Holland 30 years later, you know, so yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy. Yeah. That was, that was, it was cool. So, and Burr Steers, I was thinking of Burr. He went on to do, um, what was it, um, 18 again, I think, or what that Zac Efron movie. Right. He was the director of it, and he was like, brain hemorrhage. You know, oh, his right. character was so <laughs> funny. I mean, Burr, he was a character. So there were just some neat, you know. Tim, sweet. hey, Tim, come on, Tim. Yeah, come on, Tim. <laughs> yeah, Burr was hysterical. He's, um, he was Jackie Kennedy's like nephew or something. Burr Steers was related to, you know, his background. It's really cool. Yeah. He's like related to the Kennedys. You'd never know this like, you know, right. hey man. <laughs> so it was really funny. Um, yeah, there was just some neat, there were some neat actors there and um, it was such a great experience. So I, I'm really, I'm glad and I'm grateful. And my kids, I couldn't even show it to my 11 year old yet. I can't show him my own movie because it's too gory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to wait until he's a little bit older. My, my uh, 17 year old son has seen my movie and it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's just mom. You know, oh yeah, she's so hard. I'm like, come on, there's like a whole group of fans that love this. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Come on, I kids. Mean, I'm 17 you know? and I like it. So why can't you? Oh right? my gosh, <laughs> exactly. Yes, I have to tell my son that. <laughs> totally right. that is so cool so i didn't know you were 17 Roger. oh yeah oh my gosh oh my gosh you're adorable oh <laughs> thank you so you got you know you got a you got um so much time too to do what you want to do and and yeah and make your career what do you want to be when you grow up film yeah director director do? yeah well see you've got a great start and this, yeah for sure just it's... the fact that you have your channel Right. This is this is really cool, and you've met. I've seen some of the people that you've interviewed. Um, good deal. Way yeah. to go. I mean, that's what you do. You create your opportunity. For yourself. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Tom McLaughlin, the the director and writer of Jason Lives, which is also one of my favorite films, told me like I can already tell that you're going to be successful after I like explain him my movie ID, you know, and that like means the world to me. So, uh, yeah, yeah this has been yeah. a very cool uh, experience, like interviewing all these people from, uh, yeah. from the biz or, or who were used to be in the biz, you know, mm -hmm. it's cool yeah. to hear other people's experience, you know, you can, it's almost like uh, a friend of my parents. Um, I told him about this and he was like, this is, this is probably almost more inspiring than film school, you know, because these are actually yeah. in the biz, you know, not teachers yeah. that, probably wanted to be in it but like gave up on it or right. wanted to become a teacher or something you know right. yeah somebody who actually did it yeah right and the the experience of, of doing a film I mean it was like unlike anything else and I, I enjoyed it it was a lot of hard work too I was running so much in that yeah. so, <laughs> and always having like blood on me too you know oh That's yeah I had five I had like five different changes of clothing because all the different <laughs> scenes you know the clean ones and then at the end the, the bloody ones so 
I probably have it somewhere in my house still, that green shirt. Oh, that would be so cool to see. <laughs> somewhere. So I have to see if I can find it. So, but I, Roger, I really appreciate you talking with me. Yeah, I, thank you for your time. Absolutely. So check out, check out your, um, I'll keep checking out your channel. Check out thank my you. Instagram. Thank you. And, yeah, I will yeah. do. <laughs> All right. Liz Kerr and Jennifer Ross. <laughs> Roger Walker, Slasher Pepper. <laughs> You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.